religion is always in flux, even when it doesn't look like it to you from where you sit, especially perhaps if you sit in a pew. But that religion has always been in flux too. It's always been in movement. It's always been dynamic. Overall, church attendance is probably down from, let's say, the 1950s. And I think what we're seeing is um, a proliferation of different forms. There are a lot of young people, they're not going to relate to a lot of the, you know, regular mainstream churches. They're looking for something different. All across New England and across the USA, a lot of the mainline churches are finding themselves without congregations and new, new people are moving in. The First Congregational Church of New London is emblematic of the transformation taking place at churches throughout the city. For many years, this building was a fabulous home for a congregation that has deep historical roots in New London. But along with, with other churches in the, the mainline denominations, our numbers are smaller than they were 40 years ago. And we really came to the conclusion that, that given the size of our congregation, uh, that we really were not in a position to take proper care of an important building like the one that we have. They found help from an unexpected place. A new church started in a storefront just a block away. We quickly outgrew the storefront to the point where I had to go and renovate the downstairs now where the other church meets. And then we outgrew the downstairs. The downstairs area I think sat maybe 85, 90 adults and quickly we outgrew it and we just needed more space. And I really wanted to see the sanctuary used again. And I offered, um, you know, just to help in any way we could to see it happen. And we came in, we cleaned, we, we fixed things up, and we got the sanctuary, you know, and it hasn't been winterized since. We were fortunate, I think, to, to find a partner in Engaging Heaven uh, who feels called uh, to maintain this building, who has a larger congregation, and uh, more able to do the work that's necessary to make this building one that will be around for generations to come. First Congregational is not alone in this transformation. First Baptist Church merged with the First Hispanic Baptist Church of New London to become the Church of the City. Montauk Avenue Baptist Church merged with the Uncasville-based Calvary Chapel. And Second Congregational Church moved to Waterford, giving its building to the Miracle Temple Church. What's happened in the U.S let's say over the last 50, 60 years or so, there's a decline in the traditional mainline Protestant denominations. Obviously the society we live in in 2014 looks very different than the society we lived in in 1950. And so I think what we're seeing now is a lot of experiments, a lot of different things that people are trying to do to say, okay, what we had been doing isn't connecting with people. God is still as real today as God was, you know, a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. And how can we connect better to that reality given the kind of culture that we now live in? But as a child of the king, you're not destroyed. God's playing for you. Church is changing the delivery of their message to better connect with their audience is not a new phenomenon. The Second Vatican Council for Roman Catholics was a watershed moment. Was it okay, they asked, to have the priest with his back to the congregation speaking a language that none of them knew? Or would it be better to have him face the congregation and speak in the vernacular of whatever the congregation had? And the answer there was a resounding B, not A. <laughs> These efforts to bring the message to an audience, need to take account of the audience. I think that we're trying to communicate to modern generations. I think we're trying to communicate to people in a language and culture that they understand. But our message hasn't changed. The message hasn't changed for 2,000 years. The delivery of that message has. One of the churches that has been most successful in reaching a new, younger audience is Calvary Chapel who now holds services in the former Montauk Avenue Baptist Church. 
We do two services. We do one in this part here uh, in, on Sunday mornings where it's uh, older adults, not elderly necessarily, but older adults, and we move downstairs where we have a lot of young people. I would say that the average age is under 30 for sure. So Sunday Night Vibes is a, is a service. We try to gear it towards young adults and, and teenagers. There becomes a time when you're coming to church with your parents and then you gotta come to church by yourself. You start to get a little bored in your parents' church and then you go looking for a church and if you don't find a church, uh, there's, there's a lot of other stuff to do out there. <laughs> so that's why, because you get to a point where you need to decide if you're gonna continue to follow Christ or go get involved in some other stuff and hopefully this seems a little more, you know, keep you in church, stay involved. I don't think they're buying into necessarily that we're doing worship services that have lights and color and rock and hip hop. I think they're coming because of the message. I think they're hungry for the message. I think it still changes lives. So what do we have? We have a kind of contemporary communication medium that communicates the fundamental message, but communicates it in a way that is more accessible to the audience that they want to reach. I think we're in a period of transition. I'm sure I won't live long enough to see the end of this transition, but I think the, the kinds of worship that made sense maybe 50 years ago, people have changed and people are looking for something different. So I think they're starting to come back, but the numbers that once were, nobody has gotten there yet. But I think everybody who's coming into town has the hope that they, they will get there or else they wouldn't be here. I think everybody thinks that they're, they're going to meet a need and it seems to be proving true. You ever seen a baton race? You run and you hand the baton off and then you run and you hand the baton off. I believe with all my heart these men that brought, saw great awakening in this land are handing a baton. And, and you know, they actually put the fastest in the final lap, the fresh legs. And I almost can see myself reaching back in a generation, pulling a message from these men and running it to the finish.